What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the 2019 Mercedes-Benz C63 S AMG. Huge thank you to Mercedes-Benz of North Lake for providing this car for today's video. I have all their information down in the description below. Definitely check them out for your next Mercedes. And the model that we're looking at today is finished off in polar white and has an MSRP of $90,000. Underneath the hood, this features a handcrafted 4-liter bi-turbo 8-cylinder engine. It produces 503 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. The engine is paired to the AMG SpeedShift 9-speed automatic transmission and sends the power to the rear wheels. And with a curb weight around 3,800 pounds, you can expect to get 0-60 to 60 in 3.8 seconds. And running off a 17.4-gallon fuel tank, this can achieve 18 miles per gallon in the city and 27 out on the highway. This has an overall length of 187.3 inches with a wheelbase of 111.8. The height is 56.1 and we get a width of 79.5 inches. We get ventilated disc brakes in all four corners that are drilled and slotted as well. Six piston brake calipers are up front with four pistons in the rear. And wrapping the brakes are an optional set of 19 inch AMG forged wheels. The front end has a super clean and aggressive look to it. We get vertical slots within the grill, your Mercedes and AMG badge. Four parking sensors are on the front of the bumper and then we get two more on each side. We get gloss black trim on the lower section of the grill with large openings in the center as well as each side to allow maximum cooling to the intercoolers as well as the radiators. The front splitter protrudes out giving it a muscular appearance and then finishing off with the multi-beam LED headlights with LED daytime running lights. The hood flows nicely to the front end of the car. We get another Mercedes badge, two sharp lines on the top of the hood. Then as we make our way to the side profile of the car, the front fenders get a V8 by turbo badge. The two-tone wheels have a great contrast to the white exterior. We get gloss black trim in the lower side skirt, two sharp body lines within the doors leading their way to the rear end of the car. We get two-tone chrome and body color door handles. LED turret signals are located on the gloss black side mirrors. We also get cameras located on the underside. We have gloss black trim surrounding the entire mirrors. Gloss black on the roof with the panoramic roof. And then making our way to the rear end of the car, we can get a great look at the overall proportions as well as the side profile to it. We have LED taillights. Six parking sensors are located in the rear bumper get AMG exhaust system with the blacked out tips, blacked out lower diffuser with some fins on it, and then making our way to the trunk lid, we have some chrome running along it, all your badging for AMG and C63S, and then finishing up with a lip spoiler. So there's a good look at the overall exterior styling as well as some of the performance specs of the sedan. What do you guys think of this car? I love the overall look. It's very clean looking, but super muscular as well. The rear end with the diffuser and the exhaust is a great touch. The optional AMG wheels I really like, especially with the red brake calipers. The white color contrast with all the black accents I think looks fantastic. Getting back to the front, super bold looking. I definitely love the way it looks. So now we're going to take a look at the interior. We've got the new AMG key for these Mercedes. We're going to go ahead and keep the vehicle in the locked position. And all I have to do is go up to the door handle and grab it. Car automatically unlocks and we can get a great look at the interior. On the door panel we get black leather as well as some white stitching to it, a little bit of Alcantara and then some silver aluminum accents to it. All of your window controls as well as your mirror controls, auto aluminum release handle as well as the lock and unlock. These are all of your seating controls for the power seating to do the base. We can extend the leg rest portion of the seat. These are memory seats with different settings, heated and ventilated seats as well, and then the Burmester audio system. Down below we have your trunk release button as well as some storage and some cup holders. And then making our way inside the car we get an illuminated AMG badge along the door sill. And then we get these bucket seats which have an amazing look to them absolutely large bolsters in them as you can see we have solid black leather within the center more white stitching giving it a great contrast we have some silver accents up top with the amg badge all perforated leather within the center some more alcantara trim to it really nice stitching design and overall look to the seats and then moving more towards the interior, we have a two-tone steering wheel with Alcantara on the left and right side. Carbon fiber makes its way to the top and the bottom, and we even get a leather stripe up top, and it is a flat bottom design. And then now inside the car, keeping my foot on the brake, we can go ahead and start it up. Along the steering wheel, you're going to find a lot of controls to operate the vehicle. Over on the top right here, we have cruise control settings as well as your lane pacing and lane keeping. You have a back button right here to control the screen in the center. If I hit this back, we can go back one screen. And then actually swiping my finger up and down on this black piece, it'll actually change the screen in the center. So swipe my finger over to the right, we can go to various items. If I go back over to navigation, I can hit that 
and go into the navigation to have it on the screen. Over on the right side, we have more controls like that, hitting the home button. The screen in the center will go to the home, and then just like with the other one, you can scroll into different items just like on the left side, and then click it to go into the screen. We also have all your Bluetooth and audio controls over on the right side, and then these two buttons down here are actually LCD screens, which is a really clean touch to it. Just tapping the button, that'll change between drive and manual mode, and then we have a suspension button. The screen will change between Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. And then over on the right side, this is how you control every driving mode to it. Right now I'm in the Comfort mode. It'll also come up on the main screen. As I twist the style, we can go down into Sport, Sport Plus, Twisting it again, we get into race mode, and that's how you heard the differences in exhaust tones as I revved it. But very nice how the LCD screen itself changes rather than having physical buttons. This also features steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. They have a great design to them, finished off in the same aluminum silver coloring. You can get a great look at the steering wheel and all the coloring. We have the shifter over on the right side, and then the turn signal stock over on the left. Over here, we have all of your headlight controls, electronic park and brake. We have your steering wheel button to keep your hands on or off of it, lane keeping assist, parking sensors. This is your heads up display button. We have an air vent up top, more black leather and white stitching on it. Then if I press that heads up display button, you'll actually see this panel rotate out and then it'll come up with the heads-up display. We have your speed in it as well as a tachometer, and then some of the safety features come up as well. Moving on to the center of the screen, this is all controlled using the panel down here. We have a rotary dial that you can twist. You can also move it up, down, left, and right. This is a touch pad. You can use your finger and swipe on it. You can also press it. And then we have back buttons, home buttons. Going under vehicle, we can change some of the parameters of the vehicle with your dynamic selection, different driving modes, and see a lot of things within the vehicle. You can adjust your lighting, vehicle settings, your owner's manual. Then if we go back and hit the home button, going into the navigation screen, we can get a great look at the overall map. One thing very nice, this is a pinch to zoom, kind of like in a smartphone. If I pinch it, that will zoom in on the screen, which is a great touch, so super easy to use, actually. And then down below the screen, we have three more air vents, just twisting the center to the left. That'll close the air vent. They move very easily, and they kind of lock into a center position. We have all of your climate controls located in the center, hitting the menu button down. That comes out with the climate menu. And then to change everything, we have buttons on each side. Your fan speed, you can just toggle up and down, and it'll show it all on the screen, as well as an intensity with that color changing. We have your zone over on the left side, just tapping that up or down, everything comes up on the screen. You also notice all carbon fiber within the center console of the vehicle with an AMG badge. We have an analog clock, radio controls on the left side, just tapping the radio button, it pops up on the screen. Then we have telephone control and then hitting the car icon right here, we can go into the information of the vehicle, hazard switch, and then by pressing this we get a little bit of storage in here as well as two cup holders and a 12 volt. Below that we have a lot of the drive modes. You can press this to toggle between manual and automatic. That is the same as going over here on the steering wheel. We also have the same suspension button toggling this between Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. Over here we have your exhaust valves open or close, the engine start stop feature. And then by pressing the camera button you can see the different driving cameras this vehicle has. Just rotating the dial down we can see the full front view, a narrow front view with a top down view. Then we get a side down view and the full rear view and then a rear view with the top down. So then putting the vehicle into the drive you can see how everything changes. Very nice camera system, super HD graphics. You can see how I can see all the guidelines, the top down to easily get into a parking space. And then going into reverse on the car, it now goes to the rear view camera. But super easy to use this camera system. And moving through the center console, we have one silver button to open up the center console. We have a pretty good amount of storage space in here actually with some USBs as well as an SD card slot. This whole piece comes right up. We have a good amount of space in here. This kind of acts as a shelf so nothing's actually going to fall out when it is open. Closing that up now, we can get a great look at the overall interior. The carbon fiber and silver looks fantastic. We have the white stitching along the doors. A really good look at these single piece bucket seats. And making our way up top, we have a slim mirror, your sunroof control, just pressing this button back. The whole sunshade will open up and the one in the back opens up as well. And making our way to the rear end of the car to take a look at the rear seat space, we have a great looking door panel just like within the front, the same black leather and all the white stitching and aluminum accents to it. Same black leather with perforated leather in the centers. We get the same white stitching everywhere, really cool design overall. And then take a look at the interior space in the rear. So getting comfortable now, I have the driver's seat set to my height, which is 5 foot 11. I have quite a lot of knee room. My feet fit nicely underneath the seat. The armrest is in a pretty good spot. Headroom, I have about maybe an inch above my head, so pretty roomy overall. And then in the center, if we open this up, we get a nice armrest in the center here. We have a little bit of storage space as well. And then popping these, we have two cup holders. Onto the trunk space now, you have a button on the interior, a button on the key fob, and then there is one on the trunk lid. Just pressing this up, it automatically opens up. We can get a great look at the overall trunk space. Definitely a lot of space in here. Even get a storage down on each side to help keep things organized. 
and then there is a handle on each side. You can go ahead and pull these, and that'll lower the rear seats. They fold down nice and flat to allow maximum cargo space within the car. Then making our way back to this side, you can see how everything's laid out. And then to close the trunk, just press the button and it automatically closes. So we are now setting off in the AMG C63S. I'm not really too familiar with the Mercedes. I've only driven a few of them. So already the first thing that jumps out at me is the fit and finish. This is amazingly nice inside. The quality and the attention to detail is pretty much top notch. Carbon fiber and Alcantara and aluminum is everything that you're touching. We have beautiful leather on these bucket seats, leather on the doors and in the center. Everything looks absolutely amazing looking. Really can't get over the interior look. And the steering wheel having the Alcantara right where your hands go, it is just a really sweet cockpit to be in. So right now, starting up the car, just normal driving. Everything is in the comfort mode, very conservative setting. I have the heads up display in the center. I also have my speed limit sign on the center gauges as well. But just cruising now for normal driving, going 45 miles an hour. It's a Mercedes, it's luxurious, it's comfortable, it's quiet. Don't really hear any road noise or tire noise. Even going over a little bridge like that, it's pretty normal, there's really nothing crazy. You're just in a nice, luxurious car. And even being bucket seats, they're ventilated. So on a hot day like this, that is a great touch. So we're gonna get this car out on some fun little twisty turns just to see what it's like. Because while this is a normal sedan, this is a great family car, a great daily driver car. This is still a high performance sports car with the AMG, the twin turbo engine, a ton of horsepower and torque, the nine speed transmission. That'll be pretty interesting to play with. And then of course the sound. I think we can all agree Mercedes is probably one of the best sounding V8s out there. So with all that said, the dials on the steering wheel are really cool how you control the different driving modes so just twisting this i love how the lcd screen changes that is a very fancy touch i would say we're going to go into sport plus mode and then i've got it into manual mode so i'm going to be using the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters but already you can tell how the car is a little bit more aggressive and firm whoa <laughs> oh my gosh we're going to put the gopro on the back that exhaust is insane Every gear change, there's like a little gurgle on it. So taking a sharp turn then, there's no body roll. You can just tell the whole car is like planted so nicely. Very stiff suspension right now. And then with the heads up display, I have a large tack, super easy to see. I even have my gears on it, but then going down once. Whoa. <laughs> oh my gosh, AMG makes the best sounding V8s, hands down. Wow, that is awesome. And then the steering feel in this, it is so direct feeling. There's no vagueness in it at all. When you take a turn, I'm pointing the car exactly where I want to. And I even like on the carbon fiber steering wheel, the leather piece on the top. That is just a nice attention to detail touch with this car. Most cars are probably just painted or something, but the fact that they actually put leather on it, that is just one more attention to detail. Man. Oh my gosh, this sounds so good. But the performance, I mean, just taking some turns, 40, 50 miles an hour. <laughs> this is a true on sports car, that is impressive. So then if we just dial it down a little bit, we'll go into sport mode and then down into comfort mode. Everything just kind of tones down a little bit. We'll put it back into normal automatic drive up into probably eighth or ninth gear right now, just cruising at 50. We're back into a normal sedan. So then talking about the normal stuff, I really like the infotainment setup, the climate controls, how everything works. I'm actually not too familiar with the Mercedes infotainment setup. I've messed with the older ones in the past and they were always a bit confusing to me, but this one is very simple. You have a home button, you have your few different items you can either scroll on this dial or use the touchpad which does have some haptic feedback so it makes it a little bit easier to use but you can easily go right into your navigation see your whole screen and then super easy to change your destination everything like that and then when we were in slow speed driving in parking lots doing the backup camera on the 360 view the graphics are insane very good graphics so it makes it very easy to park the car with the good graphics and all the parking sensors like that but now just on some back roads in comfort mode just cruising really a hard car to pick apart so then slow speed right now, we'll do a three point turn, check out the turning radius. Being a rear wheel drive car, obviously it's not gonna be too bad. Going into reverse, the backup camera, so nice. I have the 360, the top down, very easy to see everything. And you'll be able to notice the AMG CLA over there. Mike is filming a video on that. But now on some back roads, 
the nine speed also, it doesn't feel like there's too many gears. I know with these new transmissions nowadays, just adding more and more gears, you would think you're gonna go through a million gears to go up and then a million to go down. Really, seven, eight, and nine are probably just more overdrive gears. I'm in fifth right now. I have no need to go to six, even though I just did. But you know, we're gonna stay under six gear going 50 miles an hour. But the ratios seem really good. I don't feel like they're too short or anything. I'm definitely not shifting too much. Uh, but the handling on a nice sweeping turn, it's a fun car to drive. And you'll also notice when we looked at the engine, the turbos are mounted on the top of the engine, just like with the AMG GT. So it makes it to where there's a lot less turbo lag compared to mounting it much lower within the exhaust system. There's pretty much no turbo lag. As soon as you give it some gas, the engine is going. The torque in this car, you can feel it in the low speed. So at 3,000, I mean, there's, there is no lag whatsoever. It does not feel like it's a turbocharged vehicle. And I think that all makes this thing just better to drive for the performance. You don't have to wait for lag. It's just so responsive for the performance. The brakes also do a really good job. You know, this isn't a small, lightweight performance car. This is a family sedan turned into a performance car. And with the brakes, and they're huge rotors in all four corners, and they really do a good job. Just coming down from 60, oh boy. <laughs> You can feel the bite to them. Man. All right, well, unfortunately, that is about gonna wrap up the test drive in the C63S. I am really impressed. This is probably the best daily. It's comfortable to drive when you're in comfort mode. The interior fit and finish is absolutely top notch. I love the materials with the carbon fiber, the aluminum, the Alcantara. It just looks beautiful. Everything you touch is nicely crafted. Well, this is a fun car to drive for performance and an amazing daily driver as well. Once again, massive thank you to Mercedes-Benz of Northlake for providing this Mercedes for today's video. Definitely check out the link to their website down in the description below to pick up your next Mercedes of these things. Oh my gosh, these are really cool cars. Definitely check them out. So that is it for the video. Be sure to give it a huge thumbs up, smash the subscribe button. We'll see you guys next video.